or Martin Kleva. Uh, I don't, usually there's a moderator, but uh, if you guys have questions, it's a lot easier just to like answer questions and, and give you guys everything I know that way. Um, so, what's that? Oh, well, you can see that, I think. This guy. <laughs> Fucking Abbott and Costello over here. <laughs> oh, see, we got more people coming. We gotta wait. Sorry. Did you guys, how many of you traveled in from out of state? From what, New York? Uh, the Bronx? Brooklyn? Not that part, the real part of New York, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, see? Everybody thinks of New York City, and it's like, no, that's really just a hodgepodge of people who are from everywhere else but New York City, you know? Guys that want to dance, sing, or businessmen. One of the Bronx and Brooklyn, that's New York. There's a lot more people in the five boroughs, I think, than the rest of the state, right? What about Buffalo? Yeah. <laughs> We were in Buffalo a couple weeks ago. It was pretty cool. We were with uh, DDP, and then uh, we went DDP, and uh, we went had dinner with Lex Luger. How many wrestling fans? Couple, yeah. It's sad because I grew up in the '80s and uh, '70s and '80s, but I used to love wrestling. I still do. But um, we had dinner at this really posh Italian restaurant in Buffalo, and um, this was not part of my family anyway. But. Um, we had dinner with uh, DDP and Lex Luger, and Lex is in a chair. He's like pretty much paralyzed from the waist down. And just to see a guy who used to be like so, you know, and it's like just to see somebody humbled, or not humbled, because, but, you know, challenged, I guess. It's, it's not easy. It was hard to, you know, eat dinner and like not just want to squeeze the shit out of him and hug him and tell him you love him and shit. So. Sorry, I swear a lot. I, can't, I don't. I don't have much of a filter. My my handler will probably come in here and kick my butt when she comes in. But anyway, all right. Let's start with questions. Anybody? All right. So you're on the Pirates of the Caribbean, right? Yep. <laughs> God, you know the only one that was probably. Well, I shouldn't say that. I know I was never under the influence, but. There was a couple that had a tendency to dabble and come in the next morning or afternoon by the time they did get there. You know, can't do it without certain people. So, uh, you know, yeah. But we were, we were the last one we were in Australia. So I don't know how much really extracurricular stuff you can do besides maybe rum, uh, you know, and alcohol. But, um, uh, you know, the first. Well, I wasn't in the fourth one, but the first three, we filmed down to this island um, called St. Vincent. Well, actually, the first one was almost all on St. Vincent, and we did almost everything out on the water. But every movie since then, it got further and further away from, like, every really touch in the water. It was more on stage and, you know, the things they could do with, you know, CGI. And, you know, by three, we were at the whole battle scene at the end with the, in the whirlpool and all that stuff, the maelstrom, whatever. Um, that was all on a stage in an old airplane hangar, and you know, on two ships or fake ships in a way with 50 mile an hour fans and uh, sprinkler systems dropping cold water on you, and you're trying to act like you're in the rain and fighting, and you know, it's like cut, and then you're like shivering because it's like really cold, and then you're you know expected to go full bowls when you're uh, you know when it's all right action. But uh, yeah, it was, you know, pretty, uh, there were some times people come in a little tipsy. I mean, there was, let's just say, there, I still have some, I have two bottles of rum that, um, and I'm not the only one who, the, the rum from the first island, it's, you cannot, you're not supposed to take it off the island. And we would, had secret compartments on the semis, so when the semis got loaded back onto the freighter ships or whatever, you know, they could pass through customs without being, so we'd all go back to Disney and collect our rum. <laughs> so, but a shot of that and, and, and a girl's drink, and, or a guy's drink, for some of you ladies out there, and 
It's a happy night. <laughs> Not that I need that, but you know. <clears throat> All right, next. So out of the pirate movies that you've been in, what would you say was your favorite sequence to film? Ooh. You know, if, if Kevin was here, Kevin and I usually make a great team. They will, um, Kevin and I will talk about the bone cage forever. Because the scene, no matter what damn island we were on, there was the bone cage come up, you know, because we had to film different things, so whether we were, you know, I'm the only guy who does all his own stunts in Pirates, so, <clears throat> like, when we were rolling and stuff like that, we were, you know, locked in and stuff, but, so all the other guys didn't have to do it, but, like, when we rolled and went up the tree and fell down and stuff like that, like, you know, I had 200 pound stunt guys falling on me or whatever, and, uh, but the bone cage was probably the, the funnest sequence, you know, even though it was the hardest because, you know, we were dropped down into a cavern and that water was like just above freezing and we literally were told to wear wetsuits, but it made no sense because they had, they had to cut them so they didn't see it in your costume. So what's the point if the water's just gonna get in anyway? So then we ended up um, warming the water in our own way. And, yeah. And I kept telling Kevin, knock it off, because we're like little kids, you know, we're splashing. Well, I wasn't splashing, but the rest of them were splashing, and I kept saying, guys, knock it off, I don't want to get an ear infection, you know, from the sure as shit. We had to leave for a, a hurricane was coming through um, the area in Dominica, and uh, so everybody got sent home, and two weeks later when we were all supposed to go, we get the call, oh, we're going to be delayed about another two to three weeks because one of our actors got an ear infection, and it was Kevin. <laughs> so, it was, you know, thanks to Kevin, we had an extra two to three weeks vacation. So, because they couldn't fly him with the ear infection. So, uh, anyone else? Anyone? Bueller? There we go. Uh, when working on the sets, did any of you guys really suffer from any uh, motion sickness or sea sickness? That'd be me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, back to the bone cage. We were, um, we were suspended really high, but it looks like, obviously, we're just swinging on a single rope. And we were, but we were also between two huge cranes, so they had cables on each side, and then sometimes it was just one, and it looks like it's fun going back and forth. If, if that's all it was, that's no big deal, because it's just a swing. But in reality, when you keep going back and forth, then the ball starts spinning, and then you're like a, a pocket watch. And so... If, if a music park wants to make a ride get somebody sick, that's all you need is seriously spin people and just go back and forth where they can't lock in on one stationary place. And I was, there was a couple times I had to get out and one time uh, I was like, I'm gonna puke, I'm gonna puke, I'm gonna puke. And they're like, no, no, no. And I'm like, and Kevin was like, get him down, he's gonna puke. <laughs> so I, we lowered down and I hopped out the cage and I ran where I thought it would be safe, which was behind the blue screen. And um, Gore thought it was funny, and so he sent one of the cameramen, and it's on like one of the Easter eggs on, I think, P2, and it shows him following me behind the, um, the green screen. And that morning, coming into work, I wasn't feeling all that great anyway, so I decided to eat like three huge chocolate brownies and like drink four purple Gatorades. And uh, yeah, the cameraman. So I was known for like. Yeah, losing my cookies or brownies, whichever they say. <laughs> Even on the ship, though, like in P1 was the worst because we were just on a barge with a ship built around it, and uh, you know a barge doesn't break the water like like a ship will. So we were at the mercy of the sea. So when it was like nine and ten foot, you know, swells, you know, it would be like cut, and you'd see a bunch of guys <laughs> for the sides of the boat. <laughs> so. You know, a lot after a while we were all taking drama meetings, so <clears throat> to do a lot of acting and then, you know, it's like cut and if you're not puking, you're, <sighs> you're sleeping because it makes you so drowsy. So, yeah, yeah. And there was, the only other time, well, there was two times I saw somebody get hurt. <clears throat> Once, seriously, was the, um, the scene in P2, uh, Johnny's stunt double 
which is one of the great uh, gymnasts from the University of Michigan. Um, he was doing Johnny's spin after he's on the stake. And he's unraveling in the cavern or down the between the thing. And the stunt guy man, the stunt guy was rehearsing it, and they didn't take into account the gravity or the the G force from spinning. And his legs came apart, and he couldn't hold them. It ripped his his groin all oh. places. So to hear that scream is you know that guy was out six months, and uh, yeah, I mean just ripped. So when you watch that scene next time, know that that. The guy who had to come in and do that is, you know, very, was very taxing on his leg. You know, we lost one guy. And then the other time was, um, we were, as we get the boat to flip back over, and we all plunge back onto the ship, we were all basically standing on the, well, the actors were taken out again, and then I had to do it all, you know, with the stunt guys. We were all standing up on the, the poop deck railing, and uh, I said, poop. Um, <laughs> and, and we had, imagine like one of those huge um, garbage containers, like that's as long as this room, filled with water. And that was suspended above us. So the boat, they rocked it a little bit, and then they dumped that much water on top of us to look like me. And it literally forced you to the side, you know, if you didn't. And uh, stunt guys are always trying to one up each other, trying to be the first guy, or the, you know. And we did it one time, and then um, Gore wanted to do it just one more time for safety, and Tommy DuPont, which is one of the best stunt, stunt guys and fight choreographers, he was doubling Barbosa at the time, and um, the force was so great that uh, he got swept off to the side, and on the side of the boat were like these solid wood things to hold three cannonballs for when you're firing them. And it hit, he, his head hit it, and it just crushed his eye socket right in. So, you know, literally cut, and then we see Tommy over there, and blood just gushing down. And luckily, Jerry was there, Bruckheimer's the man, and he had his um, personal helicopter take him from that island and get him to Miami for surgery right away. And luckily, and Tommy was back for four and five, so, but that was some pretty scary, you know, Scary shit. So, next, little guy. Gosh, you know, I, I want to say Johnny Depp because that's what everybody's expecting me to say, and he is. He's, he's so amazing, but um, of all the movies, God. Uh, yeah, you know what, I'd have to say it's probably Johnny or, or one of the guys from Pirates, whether it be Jeffrey Rush or Kevin McNally. Um, I mean, I've done a lot of stuff, so the guys on Scrubs are pretty cool, but uh, yeah, I guess Johnny. I mean, there's two guys that I still would have loved to have worked with. I, I, I would kill to work with Mel Gibson. Um, two of my favorite movies, I don't care what time you wear the movie, but I'll watch it to the rest of the, to the end, and it's Braveheart and uh, The Patriot. Just and anything Mel Gibson does, I freaking love the guy. And um, and I would have loved to have worked with uh, Jimmy Cagney, but that's way before my time. So, but yeah, I have to say Johnny. Who's your favorite? You worked with Johnny Depp? <laughs> yeah, Jack Sparrow? What happened to Marty? <laughs> Get him out of here. Do something, will you? Where are you at? There he is over there. Okay, next. Anyway, here we go. Green Man. What was your favorite scene to work on in Pirates? Oh, favorite scene? Ooh. Um, well, earlier I said the bone cage, but now I'm thinking maybe in P3 when we were doing Singapore. And I got to blow up the, the whole stage. Yeah, and the, the blunder dust. Uh, blunder bust. Yeah, that was um, another stunt that, you know, uh, that that was a real gun in, back in the day. And it was heavier than the man that I carry around with me every day, you know. Uh, <laughs> over the kid's head there. Anyway, but um, 
Yeah, to come up out of the floor, and I had to hit my mark, because if I didn't hit my mark exactly, the ratchet that was attached to my back, and the floor that was behind me, that, you know, is still there, um, if I didn't hit that mark just right, I, that would have been too forward or too far back, um, it would have pulled me back and could have took my head right off. So, that was one of those things you're like, shit, do I really want to do this? Is it, you know, uh, and, uh, but yeah, I have to say Singapore is pretty cool because that whole thing was built on a stage on Universal Studios. It was the biggest stage, you know, that's to date. Um, and then we got to blow the whole place up after. And it's funny because we were all outside the stage because we wanted to hear the boom. And, uh, you know, there was a Universal tram going by, uh, you know, for a tour. And to hear boom, it shook the whole place. And it was like a damn worst thing could happen. But... I, yeah, I mean, I, I'd have to say probably that. Thank you. There was a follow-up to that. When you're doing something particularly dangerous, like that scene, did you have to sign off an insurance waiver for that scene or something? <clears throat> you kind of sign your life away when you sign the contract. Yeah. So, and I always put it in my contract that I do all my own stunts. Because, A, they're not going to find somebody that looks like me, and I don't want them trying to do it. Yeah, but does, does your life insurance not cover that period of time or something? My life insurance doesn't know shit about it. So, <laughs> it's, you know, more power to my wife or more money to my wife if that happens. Um, you know, but, you know, that's why the Tom Cruises and the guys who say they do all their own stunts, bullshit. Well, up to a point where the, yeah. up to the point where the insurance company objects. Right, exactly. So it's it's really actor action, and Tom Cruise does a lot of some of the you know hairy stuff. But I know at least four guys that do Tom stunts, so the stunts, the stuff that the insurance companies are not going to sign off because if he gets hurt, just like if Johnny would have been doing that rap and his legs would have came, you know, we would have been shut down for a long time, and you would have to pay everybody while you're down and. It's kind of like Johnny on P5, um, he had hurt his finger, it got cut, and he had to fly back to LA to get it, you know, surgically done, and so we were down for two to three weeks while they were working with that, and, um, you know, something, something like that happens, and, you know, that's why the insurance companies, that's why they say, no, you're going to have stunt guys, because we're, you know, I hate to say it, but us stunt guys are expendable. So they can find me, you know, another guy. That's why I get to do my own stunts. So I don't get paid much better, but you know, I wish, I wish, because I know some guys that did like, uh, I know a guy who did the stunts for, um, ah, I forget the name of the Beast in um, the first X-Men, but um, he did, oh, he was doing Logan. He was doing, um, whatever, like Wolverine. Wolverine? Yeah, and the scene where he gets, he's in the back of the truck and he gets, Flown out through the windshield from the back of the truck. He uh, he asked for a hundred thousand for each take, and he did it twice. So two hundred thousand dollars to do two takes. You know, I wish I had that kind of you know leverage. But that's Canada, and they don't you know they don't get residuals. So for them to you know ask for their you know their bonus money up front, it's kind of like how it works. So anyone else? You. Uh, if you had to fight Chris Grapple wearing pajamas again, who would win? If I had what? If you had to fight Chris Grapple wearing pajamas again, who would win? Oh, I'd keep Chris's ass. Because <laughs> he's, he's really just a, you know, a chubby guy who's all of a sudden lost weight, which is me now. I'm trying to lose weight on the Atkins. So I'd keep his No, Chris is a badass dude, I'll tell you. He's, uh, and he's so cool because I don't know if you've seen the, the whole thing about it on... Um, is that what you saw it on Jimmy Kimmel when he was talking about? I read the pamphlet. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so weird, like, you know, I'm watching, and I never watch Jimmy Kimmel because I'm not a big fan of his. And uh, somebody's like, dude, you're going to be on Jimmy Kimmel later on tonight. I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, they show a picture of you, and Chris Pratt's talking about you. And he wasted his whole damn segment talking about how does it, you know, he acts like he's wrestling with a dinosaur, and he goes into this whole thing, well, look, they have this little guy. And, he was in, uh, you know, what we call CGI or pajamas, which is basically what the green guy back there is doing. And uh, so I'm, you know, giving him, you know, something to struggle with and everything. And one of the scenes or one of the takes he, when he was 
Actually, it's Bryce, which is uh, Ron Howard's daughter. It hits me with a gun, and that's when Chris is able to throw me off. And uh, I cracked my head open a little bit, so I start bleeding. And Chris freaked out. He's like, oh my god, I killed Marty. <laughs> and I just got up. I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's do it again. Because I knew that, you know, it wasn't the best take. So, you know, life goes on. But, you know, right there, bleeding, you have to get tested, too. Like, they gotta, you got to go to see a, um, uh, uh, a doctor for the film to get signed off. You don't have HIV. Um, you know, because something right there, you know, like, that could have... I could have dripped blood into his, I don't know, maybe his mouth or maybe his eye and, you know, if I had something like that, they got to, everybody's got to know if anybody's carrying any kind of infectious disease, even if it's down to, um, I remember one time somebody, somebody thought I had con conjunctivitis. I'm like, no, I just have allergies because my eyes are, like earlier I just said, my eyes are really dry today. And so somebody had said, I think Marty's got conjunctivitis. So the, the damn medic comes over and says, Oh, uh, we have to check your eyes out because uh, we had a complaint that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, my eyes are just... So they checked it out and sure, shit, I was right. But they had to be safe because they didn't want, you know, pink eye going around the set. So we get very territorial when it comes to our money. So next. Yes. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, well, as a kid, I never thought about being an actor. I always wanted to be called what was a daredevil, which is, it is different than a stuntman, but it's the same, even though it's different. But Hooper, the movie Hooper was like when I was a little kid, and probably Smokey and the Bandit and stuff like that, I always thought was, you know, just the coolest. And one of my dear friends is a guy named Corey Eubanks, who is Bob Eubanks' son. Um, well, stepson, but he, I mean, Corey loves him so much he took his stepfather's last name and everything, but Corey's the guy who jumped the General Lee most of the time during the Dukes of Hazard days, and so he's like the number one stunt car driver, and uh, so to see shit like that, it, it really wanted me to, not that there's too many kids driving cars and jumping and stuff, but, you know, kind of the kind of stuff I always wanted to do, and I was always busting my head open doing something, you know? I'd crack my head open, get the stitches out, and then my dad was this big construction guy, and he's like, you know, now stay away from the fucking ice. So I'd go out in front of the house, and he'd be standing in the front window watching me, and I thought I'd be, you know, smart ass. And I'd go out on the ice, and I'd shuffle my feet like, ja -ha -ha. sure shit, I'd ball, <laughs> smack. Oh, shit. And I wasn't worried about the blood, it was more like, oh, I'm gonna get my ass beat again. <laughs> So yeah, I was always busting my head open, and, which scares me because I have a four and a half year old and she is like fearless. And we have her in gymnastics and they've already asked her to like, um, to be on like the competition team. And I'm like, all right, is this just a ploy because you want more money a month? Or is it, they're like, no, she's like fearless. She doesn't, she doesn't think about, you know, doing flips and stuff like that. So it's good to get her going now. So I'm like, all right, I'll buy that. Or you're buying it, or I am buying it, I don't know. <laughs> Next. Now. Yes? Would you be okay with your daughter doing what you did? Um, yeah, because you know what? Women make great money doing stunts. Because um, uh, there's less of them, and, you know, the, the woman has become you know, just as big a superhero and everything else as any guy in, in the show business, so... And if they're petite, they can do stunts for, you know, you know, kids or teenagers. And it's usually because, you know, a teenage boy is pretty much like a, a small female until his voice changes. So, yeah. I'll have to teach her some martial arts once I learn it. But, you know. <laughs> uh, next. I think it's pretty stupid, really. I mean, no, I don't know. Did you just ask me what I thought about Pirates of the Caribbean movies? About the ending. Oh, the ending? In P5? The, about the series ending. Oh, I don't, you know, if if you guys see it a couple more times, and we hit 800 million worldwide, I think there might be another one. <laughs> We're at like 750 million worldwide, but it's, you know what? 
at first I thought it was us, but other than um, Beauty and the Beast, because there's so many kids, you know, it's a family movie, and maybe The Fate of the Furious, not a lot of movies are doing that awesome. I know Wonder Woman's done it pretty well, but still worldwide, like, for the budget, um, you know, especially when you consider the ticket prices, 800 million worldwide is not a big number when you're charging 20, 30 dollars, you know, to see an IMAX or whatever. You know, Avatar did really well, and they like to claim that they're the, the shit, but when you're charging 35 dollars to go see it at IMAX, and you know, you take a date at 70 bucks, you know, that's a lot of money to put up against Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind and IMAX would have blown Avatar out of the water, you know what I'm saying? So it's not that Avatar was a great, like, cinematic Wonder Woman movie, or, you know, wonderful movie, which is, because a lot of people love the, the CGI and all that stuff, and if you force people into seeing it in 3D or IMAX, then you're gonna get huge ticket prices. Let's go back to when it was $10 a movie, and, you know, you the, you know, guy could take a girl on a date and go to dinner and a movie, then you'll see, you know, really who holds where in the, in the box office. So, I'm a little perturbed by that, but... Anyway, you gotta ask a question. I'm looking right at you. You. Which one, me? I'm looking at you! Oh, <laughs> this guy right here. Oh, I don't know what he does me. Right here. Don't roll. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who else am I looking at? <laughs> I'm looking right at him like I'm talking to this guy over here. You don't want a question? Uh, sure, I'll throw you a question. Okay. What's your opinion on the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean ride? The ride is great. Um, the, the, I think the better one it might be the Singapore one that just had, what was it? Singapore? China. They just opened a new Disneyland somewhere. Shanghai? Because I think that one is built off the movie where the movies have always been built off Disney World and Disneyland. So I think there's more, like if you were to go to Shanghai one, you'd be like, oh, I'm going to the Disney, you know, the, the movie ride. So, but I love it. I mean, you know, I, I go to Disney too much because my, my wife and the dog, the little one is like, I think we've been there five times already, but she's only four and a half, going on five. And we'll probably be going for her birthday again, but, you know, for them to have me go for free and give me a handler, which is like $500 an hour, is nothing to them because, you know, if they were to have Johnny go, like Johnny makes surprise things on the ride, but obviously, like, he wouldn't be able to do Disneyland without shutting the park down because he'd be mobbed all day, so, <clears throat> um, I, I, it's weird for me, like, going and I look at these rides, I'm like, God, people pay all this money, it's really no more than just a over-glorified carnival ride, if you really think about it, it's like, okay, so, there's a little extra money in the, the aesthetics, whatever, but, if you really think about it, it's a small world, and it, it's all really campy, and we're like, you know, you can go to a carnival, and it's the same you know, you can get cotton candy and hot dogs and all that stuff and lose your guts on the, the world, whatever that damn thing is, the hurricane or whatever. And, uh, but am I right? I mean, is it kind of campy? No? Think about it, really. Next time you go, you just think about, if you think of Cedar Point is probably fair buck, almost a better place to go because you can ride more rides and you're really going to lose your you know, your wind and your guts and everything else all day long. So, that's my opinion. Thing one, thing two. Who's thing one? You? Any questions? What's it like to kiss a girl? Let me tell you about that. Uh, just kidding. Way back. It was terrifying. Terrifying, really? No. No, see? If you really look at the makeup on the guys, you're like, God, that thing, it's almost 50 years old now, the ride. Yeah, we were on it, we're just like, looking around, we're like, this is not as good as the first time. Yeah. Because all the lights were broken. Um, second thing, what did you do in Zombieland? Zombieland, that was some fun shit. 
Most of my support, well, I think all my stuff got cut out. I was on it for like five weeks, but, um, and the best scene that I did is when um, Woody enters that little cage and um, all the zombies are closing in on him. And I was a child zombie that I climbed up on the top and I opened this hatch and I come falling through the ceiling. And just as he turns around, he blows me away. So I was like falling, boom, up against the cage. But it didn't make the final cut. So it kind of sucked, but I don't care they started to pay me. <laughs> do whatever you want. And I heard they're going to do another one. Yeah. I hope. Which I, I hope it, I'm getting a little bored with the zombie stuff, to be honest. Because the wife watches um, iZombie and Fear the Walking Dead and Walking Dead. And I like fear more than walking myself because it, I guess I, I started watching it from the beginning. And the regular Walking Dead is getting kind of old because it's like, really? How come every woman like knows how to handle a gun and has always got her hair perfect? Nobody's ever really dirty. It's like, and they're all badass and they all wear these kick-ass cool clothes. And I'm like, it just kind of like, I, I guess I shouldn't complain because it's not reality anyway, but I look at stuff like that. So it's not like zombies are really going to come out. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> they do say, though, down in the Caribbean, they really do believe because I guess they take some pretty potent drugs where people have been buried and they thought they'd been dead and then they've come back like, you know, a couple of days later and you're like, they just didn't detect the like, heartbeat. Or in the States, we don't really have that problem because we have the best technology to really, you know, figure out, not just a, yeah, I don't feel a pulse, okay, put them in a box. <laughs> so, you know. Anyway, next, here we go. You ever uh, get confused for Bert Troyer? Mini me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, and the funny thing is, it was, it was, I remember I was on tour with the Wizard of Oz, we were doing a Broadway tour for three years, and uh, it was down to Vern and I, and I've known Vern forever, because we both grew up in Michigan, and, um, uh, you know, he's, I, he's a true New Year's Eve baby, he was born, or I should say New Year's baby, because he was born on, you know, January 1st, and he's, but he's like two feet smaller than I am, he's literally, Two feet eight. So, um, and the other thing is, he, he grew up Amish. So imagine Vern now versus the Vern who grew up with like no electricity, no TV, none of that stuff, to the Vern who's hanging out at the Playboy Mansion and all the things that come along with become a movie star. It's like, you know, it's, he's a totally different guy now. It's like, you know, if he knows I'm in Vegas the same time he is, he's like, Yo, Marty, come on over to my room. I'm like, dude, I gotta get up in the morning. I, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, man, you don't get it. I've got hookers here. I'm like, no, dude, that's okay. I'm married. No, dude, you don't get it. I've got hookers. God, I'm all over the place. I'm like, dude, I'm married. I don't do that, you know? So, I love Vern, but, you know, Vern is, he's gotten some bigger paintings than I did. All for never saying a word, you know? But it came down to me and him for the original one, and when I said, well, who am I up against? And they're like, oh, we can't, can't tell you the name, but, and I said, well, how tall is he? And they're like, oh, he's two foot eight. I said, oh, Vern Troyer. And I said, um, thank you very much, because in it then I knew it was pretty much they were just trying to get whoever was gonna take it for the least amount of money, and then I just bowed out and like, you know, to be honest, you can't have a mini me, you know, unless you have that small a guy. Because I'm not really a mini guy to somebody who's, you know, five foot four. I don't know how tall Mike Myers is, but um, me being only a couple inches, well, I'm about a foot and a half smaller, but Vern was the perfect choice for that. So, you know, and he's an icon. He's, he's really not an actor as much as he is an icon. I mean, he's got it made now. So hopefully he doesn't squander all his money and lives out, you know, no more doing those reality shows where he's, on his scooter and he's had a little too much to drink. So, yeah. Have you, did you ride the pirates on your hand ride before you decided to be like, be an actor in the movie? Yeah, I, I, I got to, um, where are you guys going? I'm boring? 
Sit your ass down. All right, I'll see you later. Bye, guys. Um, you know, I did. I saw it when I was... I think my dad... We were... We grew up pretty poor, so... Um, my dad being a construction worker. And we did go on a family vacation way back in the 70s. So we went down to Disney World, and um, I think that was the first time I rode the ride. And other than that, yeah, then I did the movie, and then, then I started, you know, taking, you know, girls to Vegas, or uh, to Disneyland for dates, thinking, oh, cool, I yeah, have Pirates of the Caribbean. So now I'm like, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, you know, I'm like, I'm gonna go get a, a churro. I'll be right back. Enjoy the ride. So, yeah, back there, Doctor Who? No. Are you from Doctor Who, though? God damn it. What are you doing? Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Alright. My question is, first of all, you're awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And second of all, I still remember you from Portia Run. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. Where are you guys going? Get your ass back here. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, God, I bored people. <laughs> thank you, guys. Come get an autograph. All right, thanks guys. Sorry, I swore too much. Yes, baby. Is there a movie or TV franchise you'd love to be involved in? <coughs> Is there a movie or a TV show? <coughs> it's really weird because I've never seen Dragon Ball, but I have a lot of people who said that I should play Krillin. <laughs> Do I look like this guy Krillin? Yeah. I would do a great job because I'm badass. But I, 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 I would love it if the fans would like, you know, because I know there's like a, um, I don't look like that. <laughs> really? My eyebrows are not that bushy. Uh, no, I would, I, you know, it would be an honor because I've seen like the, I've actually looked it up. I've seen the, the like on IMDb, the, um, the fans dreamcast, and I guess it would be pretty cool with some of the people that they've said they'd love to see, and if I could work with that many great actors at one time, that'd be cool, but they'll probably do some kind of Peter King shit, and, uh, or Peter Jackson, sorry, and take some average size actor and shrink them like they did in Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, you know, it's like, like, like there's no talented little people in the world except bes besides Peter Dinklage. And I love Peter, I think he's an amazing actor, but there, you know, there's Warwick, and you know, there's Vern Troyer, and there's other actors out there that are little that can act, you know, Kieran Shaw and some other guys. So, but yeah, I think it would probably be Dragon Ball, or I, I had a TV thing that was, um, was a TV pilot versus, or slash movie that um, called Me High P.I. And if you ever get a chance to watch it, you can look it up on YouTube, and uh, I was a detective that was just a short guy in, in hence me high PI. And uh, it was so rad to play because I was just, I was just me, like, kicking ass. And, you know, and it, it, I didn't, I play it all straight and, but all the, that's the, the comedy of it is me just kicking everybody's ass and, you know, all the puns and stuff like that. So if that could go to series, that would be that would be pretty awesome. Comedy Central dropped the ball. Well, they <clears throat> they aired me on. I'm sorry. But they aired me on. A, first, it was supposed to be a Sunday night. Then they moved it to a Monday night at nine o'clock. So it was in October. So they put me up against a CSI Monday Night Wrestling, uh, Monday Night Football, and the World Series. And they're like, oh yeah, you didn't get as many net people. I'm like. Did you, how many people did you think we're gonna watch when you got four of those things going on? Like put it on a different night and see what happens. But yet they, they ended up picking up um, some cop show, like uh, comedy thing, I forget what it was called, but it was another one of those Comedy Central Troopers thingies, I don't know. Uh, Reno, 9 11, whatever. What was it? Reno something. Yeah. Oh, yeah I was like, really? It was like, overly stupid, like, okay, my show was stupid, but come on. Anyway, 
Um, next. Any ladies want my number? Uh, yeah. What? I was wondering uh, if you did anything else on Broadway. On Broadway? Uh, you know what my very first thing? I did 10 years. Um, I don't know. Well, you guys are from over here, so you guys all have heard of Radio City? So I did the Christmas show for 10 years, from 1990 to 2000. So that was my first, you know, I worked on that. And I never, uh, I was grandfathered in the sense that the year after I was hired, they made um, all the Rockettes that were hired the year after, and the dancers and any of the cast, you had to take a day off. So that saved them a lot of money. But uh, since I was, I was hired the year before that, um, literally from like October 10th, to like January 10th, I would work without a day off um, that whole time. And it would get going to the point where, you know, that that's the biggest house there is. You know, that's a theater called a house anyway. But a whole 6,000 people. And we were doing six shows, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then five shows a day, Monday through Thursday. So by the end, we were doing like 236 shows and, you know, a matter of like seven weeks, you know, with like three to four weeks of rehearsal. And, uh, you know, I was never as fit as I ever was when I was doing that show because you're sweating, you know, you're playing a goddamn teddy bear in a costume or a snowman or like one of these elf things running around like there's really elves. There are, kid, I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, it was, you know, that was, that was a lot because I learned a lot too, you know, like, um, just conducting yourself and, you know, I, I came from high school drama like most, you know, most of us drama nerds were like, you know, we all like her being in the theater and stuff like that, but to be able to work on the biggest stage, you know, that was pretty awesome. And then I went to Madison Square Garden and we did The Wizard of Oz and we had Roseanne for our witch for 10 weeks. And then um, we shut down and they re redid it and we came out with Eartha Kitt and Mickey Rooney as our wizard, and that was pretty rad. So we got to tour for two years. So, yep, yeah. Um, what's your favorite role? Like, what has you done? Have you done that's been your favorite thing to do? Wow, God. <laughs> <clears throat> there was a character named Rollo or Rollo, depends on who says it. But there was a show for NBC called The Cape. And we were actually the predecessor to that show Arrow, yeah. and, except it was on NBC, which stands for Next to Be Canceled. <laughs> and um, it was awesome because it was original, where Arrow was, was already a comic book, but all the WD, all the WDB did was go, oh, well, the cake didn't make it on NBC, but let's just recast it with, you know, the bunch of, I don't know anybody from the show, but. We had like Keith David was like my boss in the show, and which we were a bunch of um, thieves, and we end up helping this cop. Um, uh, I forget his name, David Faraday or something. No, it's I forget the hell's name, but anyway, this cop who is framed, and he ends up being killed, but he can't. He doesn't die. He can't come out and tell his family that he's still alive until he clears his name. So it was a great we. 10 episodes in, and then they're like, again, yeah, you're not getting the, number, the numbers. It's like 2.3 million viewers, you know, okay, well, move us to a different night. Again, it was a Monday night at nine o'clock, and I'm like, again, you know, but we had Summer Glau, and, um, uh, and I love Summer, but they say she's the, uh, the jinx, because it seems like Serenity, and Firefly, and everything. But she's so talented. She's so great, and uh, that that would have been sh that would have been one show that would have been cool because the Arrow Arrow's still around, and I don't think they get 2.3 million, you know, over on the WB. We could have just as easily been. I don't know why they just didn't move us over to the WB or one of their things and kept it going. But that would have been, you know, Pirates is always cool, but um, you know, I'm not the, you know the star. I'm like way down on the cast list on that, so it's all. I, but you know the cool thing about pirates is I get to just I'm learning all the time when I'm on there because you're with Jeffrey Rush and Kevin McNally and these are guys that have been doing it forever. 
You know, even Johnny Depp hasn't been in the business as long as Jeffrey and Kevin, you know. Anybody know what Johnny's first movie was? What? I don't know if I heard all yep. Glad on Nightmare on Elm Street. So, yeah. Anyone? Anyone? Any form of media that you participated in, whether it be like a movie or a scene or anything that you really regret? <laughs> <laughs> Regret. Nope. <laughs> they all pay. <laughs> Next. Wait. Mm -hmm. Let, let's go. I want to. You mentioned something about residuals. Yeah. Uh, but in Canada, like in Canada, they don't. They're um, a different union. Right. So it's kind of like socialized medicine up there. No, but if. If the movie has residuals and your scene is cut, then... You still don't know you're on a contract, so that's what's good about SAG, Screen Actors Guild, or uh, AGVA, which is now merged in one thing. So if you're on a TV show or, or a film in the States, or if you do a film or whatever around the world and you get a SAG contract, whether your scene makes it or not, if you, if you sign a principal contract or a stunt contract, you make residuals. So, Johnny might make 80 million to do the film, but he doesn't make any more than I do, unless he's getting points on the back end when it comes to residuals. We all make the same. So, um, now if you do a movie up in Canada, they're, you know, or over in England, they're, they're a form of equity, but it's, they make a nice chunk of change up front, but they don't make residuals. So, you know, unless they get it figured in and say, we want, like, a sad deal. Otherwise, you could do all the movies you want, but I want something that's going to pay and pay into my pension and my, you know, yeah, for right. later on. Well, just to follow up on that, though, yeah. um, are there movies? I, you mentioned one that you were in that got cut. Yeah. I mean, are there other ones that we never saw you at all in? Zombie Land. <laughs> um, you barely see me in. Um, uh, Hancock? Anybody seen Hancock? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was supposed to be my scene, and the director, I don't know why he did this, but it was on my day off, and uh, some extra, like, won his heart over somehow, but there was a scene where, when Will Smith is like, if you don't move, I'm going to stick your head yeah. up his ass. Yeah. And it was supposed to be me going into David Maddy's ass. <laughs> And it would have been funny because David's really tall and we could have done a wire gag where you could have seen him walking away with, you know, this little guy's leg dangling. But they did it with this, you know, black guy who's six foot tall and then he's on his knees and he doesn't, I don't know what the guy was thinking, but it didn't sell very well to me. But, you know, all you do is see me mean mugging. And, but you still got to pay me, so I don't care. So I was basically an over, over glorified background actor on that, but, you know, on a pr principal contract, and that's fine with me too, but I'd much rather be known for something like Corky Romano, even if I have one line and something like that, or some badass stunt. So, you know, the funny thing is, I, I tell people, originally on Pirates, I was doing Haunted Mansion and Looney Tunes back in action. So, and I was just a background, uh, background actor uh, when I first signed up to Pirates. Um, because I was told, oh, you're gonna get a, you know, this guy who told, taught me to even going over to the, for the auditions, oh yeah, you know, hey Marty, uh, you gotta go see George Ruby, he's the stunt coordinator on this new movie, Pirates of the Caribbean. And I'm like, nah, dude, I'm too busy with these things. He's like, no, man, you should do it. So I called Tommy, the guy I told you about earlier, who got, uh, his head broke open, and eye crushed in. Uh, he was the assistant coordinator on it, and um, and Tommy had said, "Oh yeah, okay, we've got you. You're definitely gonna get something." But at, at first, you know, so I ended up just doing background. Then I started worrying, like, are they gonna do something? Because I'm not, I'm not just doing this for you know, whatever shits and giggles. So I, you know, I kind of put it out there, like, oh, I, I think I'm gonna ask them to, you know, somehow kill me off before they go off and to the islands for six months, because I don't want to just make hundred dollars a day and be away, you know, from home for, you know, six months or something. 
So it got back to Penny Rose, which was the costume designer and the head of costumes. And she came up to me, she's like, Monte, is it true that I wanted to get out this film? And I'm like, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm working on these other two things. And, you know, she says, Monte, go down and eat. I'm, I'll be right back. And I see her go over and Gore's shooting the shit with George Ruby, who was the stunt coordinator. And then she came back and she said, like, Monty, don't worry. You're going to get a principal contract. So they ended up, you know, giving me a contract that night, which made it a lot easier to go over with all my guys that were in the crew. You know, I, I felt bad because all those guys were over there as background actors, even though they were living it up like nobody's business with the ganja and the rum and everything else, and just having a great time. You know, I was there to do one thing, and that's make money. And, um, and then finally, at the end, uh, before we even left, Gore, Gore's assistant, the first AD, came up and said, um, Marty, uh, in front of all the guys, and I'm like, he's like, yeah, I said, yeah, and he's like, Gore wants to know if he can give you a line. And I'm like, yeah, I twist my arm, you know, and of course all the guys look at me like, you little fuck, you know? I just kept about falling into a pile of shit and smelling like a rose. And, uh, and then there was a line that Zoe kept saying, that Gore wasn't really happy. And Jerry wasn't a big fan of Zoe for some reason. And I love Zoe, but for whatever reason, Anna Marie didn't come back for two and three and whatever. But she was said, she says this line, she's like, Jack owes us a ship and he owes me too. And, um, and it was supposed to be like, Jack owes us a ship and he owes me too as an also. Or like, I mean, not also, but like two ships. But the way she kept saying it, it kept coming off the gore, like, and also, you know. So he wanted to separate it, and then finally it just got cut down to me just saying, Jack owes me a ship. And then her was supposed to say, and he owes me, you know, two. But they ended up cutting her, so it just ended up being my one line, P1. So, yeah. I made more money on P1, I think, than I still did in two and three together because the residuals were huge, because we still hold the record for the most DVD Blu-rays sold uh, first day and re release. And um, you know, even though we made more money in two and three, both of them in the box office, residually wise, P1 was still the best so far. Because they, they, get, they get smart, they know how to hide the numbers. So yeah, that's, that's how they stay in business, right? So, next. Yeah, you, the hat. Can you shut that door? Because <clears throat> you mentioned Jeffrey Rush several times. Do you have any stories you'd like to share about him? Jeffrey Rush. You know what, he's so talented. He's you know, I, I didn't get it at first when I when I first started working with him because I, I there's only three American actors in the first film. That's me, Johnny, and Leah Lambert, who plays Pintel. Hey, puppy. Um, the, the only three guys. The rest of them were all British or Australian. But I grew to like this this guy, Jeffrey Rush. I'm like, wow, he's so talented and like the stories and you know in the theater and all that stuff he would talk about it. and you just like you start to grow like Jesus this is like oh, I shouldn't say that Jimmy Crickus this is like um, Marlon Brando Australian version I mean he's so like he's the man and but he's so smart in the sense that like his riddles he would tell jokes and riddles that would just have you stumped and you'd be like holy cow like just simple things like there's a man hanging in a room no lights, and a puddle of water. How do you die? And it's like, and you have to figure it out, like how did that happen, you know, and come figure out, oh, the guy was standing on a block of ice, and then when the ice melted, that's how he died, because, you know, now there's nothing to put his feet on him, whatever. But really intelligent things, I'm stupid, so, but really cool, like, real stuff like that. And, um, but then, like I said, he's just, he's always got you laughing, and, the more as the movies have gone along, it's like, okay, we're ready. And it's like, and Jeffrey would be like, yeah, 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 wait, we're in the middle of a joke. 
<laughs> you know, and, you know, or Johnny would do the same thing, and you know, the things that they they come up with, you're just like, dude, where do you have the time to find the stuff online? Like, the things that Johnny's like, dude, you gotta see this. I'm like, no way. And you're like, oh my god. You know, if there wasn't a kid in here, I'd tell you, but, uh, you know, close his ears for a second. Did you know that there was guys that were born with two? That's the kind of stuff that Johnny comes up with. Like, and you're like, no way. And you find you're like, oh. I'm like, dude, you're a huge movie star. What are you doing? Like, you know? And then I got to one up him with some other disgusting thing. Oh, well, yeah, well, did you know that there's... And then he's like, oh. You know? So that's the kind of stuff we do. I mean, we're... we're just like a family after a while. I mean, after five movies, I wasn't in four, but out of the four that I was in, um, yeah, it's, we're like brothers, and you know, I could text him or, you know, call him, or at least get a hold of his personal assistant anyway. And, uh, you know, but he's always there, so if I need something for like a charity, or, you know, I do a lot of things that, um, I go to children's hospitals where there's kids that are, they're not coming home. And I get kind of choked up about it, but to, to, to know that somebody like Johnny will lend their, you know, their name or, or something, you know, to see a kid who's, you know, that's their only wish is to meet Johnny or to talk to Johnny. And it's like, like, you know, it totally humbles you. It makes you think, shit, I'm, I'm nobody in this world when it comes to, you know, you know somebody's last wish. And uh, so I, I, I look to guys like Johnny and Jeffrey, you know, they'll do anything for anybody. Sit down. <laughs> okay, where are you going, woman? Okay. I'm having fun. Tell the line, I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> Next. I almost cried. What do you want, kid? Jack owes me two shifts, damn it. <laughs> or at least a dinghy. He owes, he owes me another movie, how about that? <laughs> uh, I'd like to get another movie or two. And if you guys go to the theater, no, I know you guys are probably all gone. You know what, it was weird, because in P1, I knew women that had gone and seen the movie 20 to 30 times. And I think it's probably died off. I don't think people probably go to the movies as much as, you know, Huh? Yeah, it's too yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like we're only killing ourselves because you know. But they, you know, the big guys they don't care because they know what you're gonna buy on DVD. And then they're stupid because now you guys, you know, I know actors that are doing Redbox or or Firebox or some Firecrotch or some shit <laughs> where they're like stealing movies offline. I'm like, dude, you're killing yourself by like getting stuff off offline for free and like. You know, there's got to be a way, because now I get it where the music artists are, you know, they get bumped out when you're buying stuff offline. It's like, you know, hey, we all have jobs. I don't know what you do, but if people don't put the garbage out on the street, then there's no reason for the garbage man, right? So everybody needs job security in some way or another. And if we all just thought about it like that, because you know what, the garbage man is just as important as the President of the United States. And I'm not, I'm not, that's not a slam against President Trump because I'm probably the only guy in here who is a Trump fan. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry, the rest of you guys. You know, gotta give him a chance, guys. Trust me. You know who would have been a great president? Lee Iacocca. You guys are all too young, but he turned around Chrysler and saved Chrysler, and he was the guy who invented the, the Ford Mustang. So, but again, I've been saying for a long time since Reagan, we've always needed a, um, a businessman at least to give him a shot at one of the, you know, the country. Because they have nothing to lose. They don't need the money. You know, they're not out for no financial gain. And I'm getting tired of this. Even McCain and some of these guys, I'm going off on a tangent, I'm sorry. <laughs> we need to stop with these, you know, there needs to be term limits because to me these guys are sitting in office way too long and doing shit. You know what I'm saying? We all deserve a chance, especially people that are handicapped. You know, yes, there needs to be medical, but I'm not for socialized medicine because I don't think all of us need to pay for people who don't want to work. I just think that 
people that are born with predisposed, you know, need health coverage. And that's not a lot to ask. But anyway, the rest of it, I'll, you know, I love war. I'm kidding. I don't like war. <laughs> but I think we need to be the baddest if there is war. We need to be the baddest, and we are. And we need to get that respect back. Like, yeah, F with us and see what happens. And we're going to show that a little bit, I think, with Korea. So anyway, but, I'm sorry. Back to um, your fuzzy balls over there. <laughs> Chicks, you got peas. Do they taste? No. <laughs> Dude, they got so many good flavors in that shit now, don't they? I can't. Oh, they got everything. You think about it. They got watermelon. And... They come in blue now. What? They come in blue now. You can get blue ones. Oh yeah, that's what raspberry or what? I have no idea. Bubblegum? Something. It tastes blue. blue. Blue raspberry. Oh yeah, no, I had them all. Now I'm on the Atkins diet, so I'm never having peeps again. I got a can of drink soda. Sorry, dude. Fucking sucks. Go away. My line can wait. Like there's a line. They're all right here. Uh, yeah, anyone? Oh, logic. Yeah, what's the uh, worst injury? What's the worst one? Worst uh, I was doing stunts for um, Warren Davis. Do you know who that is? No Did you ever see the movie Willow? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you know who Wicked is in Star Wars? Yeah. You gotta be a Star Wars nerd. Are you serious? The Ewok, the main Ewok? Okay, anyway, Warwick is probably the most famous English actor over there. Still alive, anyway. And um, uh, I do his stunts on Leprechaun. And uh, one night we were rehearsing um, what's called an uh, air ram. There's two ways to do it. You can run, and when you hit the, the ram, it tosses you. Well, these guys were doing it, and they had it cranked up to like 400 pounds. Oh and the more pounds means the further you're going to get thrown. And I'm like, dude, I don't even weigh 90 pounds at the time. I do now. But I was like, dude, you gotta turn that stuff. So they turned it down to like 100. And um, we were doing it where uh, there's somebody else holding the button. And that's not a good idea. And I'll tell you what, because when you have the button, you know when you're, when you're ready to go. And so they counted down, the guy told me, you need to be in the crouch position uh, like this. Five, three, two, one. You should be like this. And it was like 2 in the morning, and I was tired, and I was like, and the assistant coordinator said, all right, 3, 2, 1. And then I just started to go down, and he hit the button, and it flew me straight up, probably higher than that ceiling. And then I came down straight on my head, almost broke my neck. And I have two huge, like, big flap of skin. And I, and I was wearing a bandana, and right away, you know when you knock yourself out a little bit, you get up right away and you're like, you want to make sure you can move? And I, you know, I grab my neck and I grab my head and all of a sudden, blood comes rushing down. I was like, and when I see my own blood or women talk about that time of the month, I get sick. <laughs> so, um, and they're all like, sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm like, no, no, I'm fine. And all of a sudden, the building started swirling around me and I'm like, oh shit. I sat down and Bleh! again. <laughs> Is her old. And luckily, I was rushed to the ER, you know, with the, the ambulance and everything. God, lucky that there was a plastic surgeon that happened to be there for some reason that night because you can barely see my scar. Where a lot of times, when somebody, you know, gets something horrible, you know, cut wise, you always see that scar forever. Because I have a couple other way places, but yeah, I almost broke my neck right there. So, busting my head open is one thing, but the. The neck thing is kind of scary. Cry, bitch! No, I'm just <laughs> this guy's like, my kids never heard swearing before. <laughs> yes, alright, <laughs> That's my favorite movie, by the way, Blood In, Blood Out. Have you ever seen that? Oh, I love that movie. Damien Chappell's one of my good friends, so I'm like, dude, let's do it with me, you know? I don't know, be Bato, little guy, somehow. Uh, anyone else? You have one. Yeah. Um, what's it like 
you taking you know like a good chunk of years between shooting movies like Pirates and then coming back? Wow, I know, right? Because we're like, we did P1, and um, I don't know if you guys knew that, but they thought Haunted Mansion was going to be their, their, yes, they yeah, and you know, Pirates was going to be whatever. And you know, John Amos got fired during P1 because they thought, what are you doing? They, they, you know, they weren't really sure. They, were, they thought he was playing it, and not that it would have been a bad thing, but you know, playing it gay or something. And it's like Johnny just said, "Look." You hired me to do this job. And he, Johnny wasn't the first choice, by the way. I forget who it was, but if somebody knows, he can tell me. But uh, he just said, you hired me to do this, trust me. And sure as shit, I mean, I mean, he hit a home run. So, um, you know, even they weren't ready for the merchandise. Because P1, we had nothing. Then when they finally decided to do two and three, then they had all the merchandise I stuff and ready to go, but that was only two or three years later. Now when we did five, let's say 2006 is when three came out. I don't care about four, but by the time we got, we did five was 2015. That's how long ago we shot it, two years ago. And they just now brought it out this year. But it was like 10 years, I mean, you know, you lose people, you know. Even some of the pirates that we had on Jack's crew in the original, the older guys have, you know, passed on and, you know, whatever, people will go, go out. And uh, so it's, it's hard. People put on weight, i.e. Johnny or myself. Um, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's not, not that it sucks, but it's, you know, you, you hope that, I know supposedly Johnny was assigned down to do like through seven or eight. You know, that's the word. Um, but like I said, if it hits, I, the magic number I heard was, if we hit 800 million worldwide, then we'll do another one. Because then they, you know, because it was 250 to do this one. So now we're at 750, so we've made 500 million, which sounds like a big deal, right? But, you know, to them, it's like, ah, you know. But that's the gross. I, yeah, that's the gross, and then. So that's not going to the production theater. Right, well, you know, they got their money back. So, yeah. you know, 500 million gross, that's still not, that's not too bad, but, you know, some movies don't even, you know, make back their money, and then they go to DVD and they do well, because, you know, people find out, like, how great it is afterwards, so, anything, you, you know what I'm looking at, ah, she's giggled. Yeah, they love Colbert. Um, fuck, I could watch The Sopranos. I'm a fucking Sopranos fan. Um, otherwise, Godfather 1 and 2, I could probably watch over and over. Um, I could watch all, I could watch all five, well, I could watch four of the Pirates. <laughs> you know? Because I tried to watch four, and it just seemed like, like, where the hell were they going? It was like almost a standalone movie, like, yeah. too much. I mean, we're silly, but it was almost, I'm just not a big fan of, what's her name? Yeah, hey! You better be one of my line. That's right, you fall down or I'm gonna hit you. <laughs> Try to sneak up. Bastard! I see you! You're not a dwarf! Okay, you can leave. You better be going to my line, though, spending 50 bucks. I've got children to feed. Your children. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know about. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Talk to the people, homie. All right, bro. I'll see you later on. There you go. Bye, bitch. Oh, now you come back. All right. Uh, I don't know. What, do you, what would you suggest? Did I sit down and watch? Are you talking TV series or movies? TV series. Yeah, I'd have to say The Sopranos, man. There's never been anything greater. You know, The Sopranos or MASH? Oh. And isn't MASH one of the greatest things ever? Like, yes. Yes. people today don't appreciate some of the, the older stuff. You and I know, because we're probably about the same age. The rest of these young folk, you know, they don't care. You like All in the Family? What? I just never cared for them. Wow. 
And you know that um, Carol O'Connor was the complete opposite of Archie Bunker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a huge liberal. But that's what makes it so funny to me that this guy is so talented that he played the ultimate conservative, you know, I don't like saying bigot because we're conservatives are not bigots. But he played it. What do you want? No. I'm not done with these guys yet. Oh, you guys are waiting for the next guy. Okay. We'll wrap it up. All right, um, that's it. All right. I'll be signing breasts in the last later on. You can see me on my TV. And come by and say hi.